Praise the Lord. Welcome to our sit-up spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I am Tony Burke Brown coming with our spiritual fitness word for today. We are continuing in our study in Genesis. We are going into chapter 5. And remember, this is spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. So if you would like to join us uh, in addition to this Monday through Friday word that comes on YouTube, if you want to join us for morning prayer Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., please refer to the information underneath this YouTube video. So we are going straight into the word. We've been doing Genesis uh, these last uh, many sessions. We have done one, two, three, and four, broken them down um, in several sessions for each chapter and today we are beginning in chapter five um which is simply you know taking a look at the lifeline of those that um came after adam so we are give me a second here um going through genesis chapter five today and i want to go through this i don't want to dwell here a long time i just want to pick out um, a few things that we need to know in Genesis 5 because I know our next session is going to be Genesis 6. And in Genesis 6, there's a lot in there. So I want to get through 5. I almost skipped it, but I don't want to skip it, right? Um, I want to go through and just pick out the things that are important for us to remember as we go forward in the chapters that are to follow because there are some principles for life in here. There are some things that we need to pull out of here and apply to our life. We know sit-ups is all about growing, changing, progressing, and being impacted by the word so we can impact the world. So if we don't apply the word, it has no benefit in our life. And so um, it is all about life application. So we need to understand what the principles are to pull out of the verses and the chapters and the books that we go to in the word of God. So again, get your pen, get your paper, get your Bible so you can write down any notes that you think you need to take so you can go back and study and do your own study and do your own spiritual exercises right after we do this. So we're going to open up in prayer and then we're going to go through chapter 5. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rejoice in you and bless your name. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and our guide. We come today hungry for your word. We pray you give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Help us to receive, Lord God, the messages that you have for us individually and collectively. And so we thank you for spiritual nourishment, spiritual food, Lord God, to feed us, that we would grow thereby, that we would increase and grow into the men and women of God you purpose us to be, to be effective for your kingdom, to be fruitful, bearing fruit that will remain good fruit. And so God, have your way. Remove any distractions. I pray that somebody, through these words that are going forth, will be saved, delivered, healed, restored, renewed, draw nearer to you, grow in faith, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And so God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for who you are. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for what you're doing. And we bless your holy name for the things that you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. So we have gone through one, two, three, and four. Uh, in chapter four, we had looked at the first murder. We looked at the effects of, you know, jealousy. Um, we looked at doing what is right so that we can be accepted of God. We looked at consequences. We looked at punishment. We looked at, you know, several different things in chapter four. But now we are looking at the descendants of Adam. And um, it is important for us to point out a few things in this chapter. Oftentimes when there is uh, a list of who begot, who begot, who begot, who, um, it's easy for us to kind of skip over it. But um, there is a reason why I want to go ahead and go into it. And one of the reasons is uh, the first couple of verses. And in verses 1 and 2, now we're reminded in, in chapter 4 that Cain killed his brother Abel. We are reminded at the end of that chapter that the Bible says that then, you know, Eve had Seth, another son. And she said that he was replacing Abel who Cain had killed. So in chapter 5, verse 1, it says, This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Now, this is to remind us, God created man, 
in his likeness, in his image, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This is what we've read from Genesis chapter 1. He blessed them, called their name Adam. Remember, he told them, be fruitful and multiply. He had given them dominion over every living creature. They had authority. They had power. But they gave that power, dominion, and dominion up when they decided to sin against God, to disobey him. That is where the fall of man came in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve chose to disobey God's command. So now, when we look in verse 3, it reads, And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness and after his image. Hold on. I apologize. So anyways, um, now Adam has begotten a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and called his name Seth. So now you have man, the things that he was given when he was created, he's given up. They gave up the power, the dominion, the, the relationship with God that they had. Um, and now you can't pass on through your seed what you no longer have. So now Seth is created or made um, in Adam's image. Sinful, rebellious, just like us, born into sin, separated from God, spiritually dead. This is what has taken place after the fall of man, after disobedience in chapter 3. After they decided that they could live apart from and separated from God. Now, each generation is born into sin. Each person is born into sin, separated from God, in need of salvation, deliverance, right relationship with God. So now we see right here, Adam, um, at 130 years old, we got a son in his own image after his own, in his own likeness and after his image and called his name Seth. And so we need to realize the state of man. Um, it is absolutely necessary. Salvation is necessary. Repentance is necessary because we are born in sin. The word tells us in Romans 3.23, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So again, we are reminded, right, that we are, excuse me, why does my phone keep ringing? I don't know. But anyway, so now we need to understand the state that we're in, that we realize our need for Jesus, which is what the whole Bible is about. From Genesis to Revelation is about Jesus Christ. You know, that God already had a plan for the fall of man that Jesus is coming, that Jesus came, and that Jesus is coming back. And so now we know that um, Adam and Eve gave birth to a son, right, named Seth, in Adam's likeness and in his image. And so this is the image that we're born in. We're from the Adam's family. And so the Bible talks in Romans about the first Adam, the second Adam, you know, the natural man, the spiritual man. We're looking at Adam and we're looking at being in the family of Christ. And that is the choice that we have. It's almost like looking at the two trees in the midst of the garden. You have the tree of life and you have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was in essence the tree that separated man from God. It was the forbidden tree. It was the forbidden fruit. And so they chose to eat of that and it separated them from God. But the tree of life is in essence a picture of Christ. He is light. He is the word of God. He is light. When we eat of him, he talks in John chapter 6 about eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood. He talks about being basically our spiritual nourishment in John chapter 15 when he talks about being the vine and we're the branches. When we're connected, we bear much fruit. But without him, we can do nothing. We have to abide in him and he in us. He talks about in John 6 about being the bread of life. He talks about being, you know, um, 
you know, the living water in, in John chapter 4. He is He is our, our, our nourishment. He is the bread of life, the living water. And so when we think about eating of him, right, we can think about the tree of life. So we have the same choice that Adam and Eve had, though they started off in relationship with God, in his image, in his likeness, and they separated. We're born separated, but we have an opportunity to eat of the tree of life by coming in relationship with Christ, believing on the finished work on the cross, that he died for our sins, paid the penalty for our sins, and you've God raised him from the dead, and he's alive. And when he lives in us and we abide in him, and we receive that finished work on the cross, we repent of sin and give our life over to God. That is where we gain eternal life, right relationship with God, and we begin to be conformed into the image of Christ as it is written in Romans 8 and 29. So that is something that we need to grab hold of. Um, even as we're ministering to others, we need to understand the need for salvation. So now it tells us, you know, uh, in verse 4, in the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years and he begot sons and daughters and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and begot Enos. And Seth lived after he begot Enos 807 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. And Enos lived 90 years and begot Canaan. And Enos lived after he begot Canaan 800 and 15 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were 905 years, and he died. And Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahaliel, Mahalilel. And Canaan lived after he begot him 840 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. And Mahalilel lived 60 and five years and begot Jared. And he lived after he begot Jared 830 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahaliel were 80, I'm sorry, 890 and five years and he died. And Jared lived 160 and two years and he begot Enoch. And Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Now, I want to stop here for a second. Now, we've seen who begot who begot who. We see all of the years they lived, 900 plus years, 800 plus years. No matter how many years they lived, we have to remember that they were born in sin, just like us. So you think how evil and wickedness are growing because we talked about that in the last um, chapter. So think about living in wickedness and evil and it's growing and you're here for nearly a thousand years. Think how difficult it is just for the years that we're here um, living not only in sin, but also um, dealing with evil and wickedness, right? We, we talked in the last chapter about Lamech being um, attacked and then killing somebody because they attacked him. And so now we're looking at, you know, we're leading up to chapter six because chapter six is when God is just looking at, hey, it's so evil. I'm going to wipe everybody away. So think about it. For years and hundreds of years, there's evil growing. Um, people are living almost a thousand years. But when we look here, we see Enoch. And Enoch, it tells us twice in verse 22 and 24, that he walked with God. Now, walk means your behavior. It means that he's in right standing with God. He's listening to God. He's obeying God. He has relationship with the Father. So here he is. He's the only one mentioned that is living in that way. The only one mentioned that is walking in relationship with God, in right standing with God. And in verse 24, it says he was not for God took him. In other words, he just basically vanished. He was walking with God, he was there, he was living, and then he just wasn't there. It reminds us of, of, of Elijah, 
who was taken up like in a whirlwind, uh, uh, you know, chariots and fire, just taken up. Enoch was, and then he was not. Think of walking with God in such a manner that you're just here and then you're just gone, right? And so this is what, you know, it tells us about Enoch. And so now it tells us that he begot Methuselah. And Methuselah, it tells us in verse 25, lived 180 and seven years and begot Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begot Lamech 780 and two years and begot sons and daughters. And he lived to be 969 years old and he died. So he is the longest living recorded person in the Bible, 969 years. I mean, he was right there, 969 years, so close to a thousand years. Can you imagine living here now in the state that the world is in with all the the murders, the hatred, the broken families, the jealousies, the divisions, um, and being here for a thousand years dealing with this, that is like hell all by itself. So now we're thinking, uh, we're, we're talking about um, Lamech in verse 28. It tells us he lived 180 and two years and begot a son, and he called his name Noah. So now Noah is from the line of Enoch. Enoch begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Lamech, and then Lamech begot Noah. And it says, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. Now the word Noah means peace, or the name Noah means peace, and it means Rest. When we look at this same verse in the NLT in verse 29, it says, Lamech named his son Noah, for he said, may he bring us relief from our work and the painful labor of farming this ground that the Lord has cursed. Now, you think about, um, you know, how this, you know, how he was named, like, you, you know, may he bring us relief from the work you know, and the painful labor of farming this ground that the Lord has cursed. But, you know, if you know what chapter 6 is about to bring, chapter 6 and 7 and 8, you know, you know that then when God comes and he, he wipes everything out, right, it's like starting all over again, right? I don't think they meant that because we know that when God wipes everything out, nobody's going to be left but Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives. So when they were asking for relief, like they didn't have to toil anymore because they got wiped out with the flood. So we got to be careful what we ask for. But at the same time, we see here is the birth of Noah. And Noah is through the line of Enoch who was walking with God. I say that because many times what we're doing will affect not just us, but the generations to come. Right? And so when we think about the generations to come and we think about um, Noah... Um, let me see if I can go up because Noah is from the line of Seth. So Seth was replacing Abel, remember? Um, and Abel was in right standing with God because remember his sacrifice, his offering was accepted. He was accepted, but Cain killed him. So, um, you know, Abel, you know, was, uh, acceptable to God. His offering was acceptable, but then Cain killed him. Seth was born and he said, well, you know, God has given me a son to replace Abel. Right. And so then you got Seth. And then it told us at the end of chapter four, that men began to call on the name of the Lord. And then Enoch came through Seth, right? And he walked, Enoch walked with God. And now you've got Noah. And so Noah is going to be the one that all mankind is going to come through his sons. Because when God wipes everything clean with the flood, Noah and his sons are the ones that are left. So I say all that to say what we do can affect the next generation and the next generation. We know that from what Adam and Eve did. When they sin, it's still affecting us right now. So how selfish is it when we begin to think, well, this is only affecting me. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter. You know, it matters. Holiness matters. Right standing with God matters. You know, um, walking in the word of God matters. Walking in love matters. Walking by faith matters. You know, abiding in Christ matters. Our salvation, it matters. It can matter to generations to come. 
Just like many are suffering through things that their parents did, their grandparents did because they learned behavior, because they were born, you know, addicted. They were born, you know, learning different behaviors and lifestyles. And so until they're introduced to Christ and make a decision to break free from that curse, that generational sin, that bondage, you know, they can follow in those same footsteps. And so now, you know, it's important that we know, first of all, in this chapter, the need for salvation because we are born in Adam's family, but we don't have to stay there. Also, what we do, it matters to the generations to come, the generations that are coming after us, the decisions that we make. Are we going to walk with God or are we going to walk in opposition to God? And so now when you look through here and you see how long people were living, you see, and, and it just got progressively less. You know, as not necessarily in this chapter, but as we go through the books, you see that people are not living as long. And now we're at the point now we're children. It's, it's a normal for young people before they're 20, you know, to not to not live because of the evil and the wickedness in this world. Because people are taking lives now. And it's not just that people are dying of old age, but people are getting sicknesses and illnesses and diseases. And then... Others are taking matters in their own hand with no regard for life because of the evil and the wickedness. People are killing off emotions, anger, bitterness, and brokenness because of the separation of man from God. And so this is the importance of us preaching the gospel and ministering to the lost. It doesn't matter what we do to say we want peace in the land, that we want restoration, that we want families restored, that we want healing. None of this takes place without people coming in right relationship with God. He is the source of peace and healing and restoration and so again Noah's name means peace and rest and so then when we finish off this chapter in verse 30 it says Lamech lived after he begot Noah 590 and five years and begot sons and daughters and all the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years and he died and Noah was 500 years old and Noah begot Shem Ham and Japheth now this is where the chapter ends but let's remember that these are Noah's sons right and so did i say earlier his two sons and if i did i'm sorry i don't know what i was thinking but shem ham and japheth um uh are the three sons noah's gonna you know it's gonna be noah his wife his three sons and their wives and this is the beginning of a whole nother story once we get into genesis chapter six once we get into genesis chapter six and we see the turn of events that are coming forth. There are principles to live by. There are things that we need to grab hold of and apply to our own life. But out of this chapter, let's remember that there is an, act, an absolute need for repentance and right standing with God. Because the only way for us to get back in that image and gain that power and authority and that dominion is for us to be in right standing with God. The only way to get in right standing with God is to abide in the Son. Jesus tells us in John 14 that no man comes to the Father but through the Son. We have to abide in Christ. The, the branches connected to the vine. We have to abide in Christ. Without him we can do nothing, he tells us in John 15. But we absolutely cannot be in right standing with God without our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need salvation. Otherwise, we are headed for destruction. But we want to walk with God like Enoch. We want to be in right standing with God like Noah. Because guess what? We have that decision that we can make. Just because we're born into sin doesn't mean that we have to stay separated from God. Just like Adam and Eve have a choice. Many are saying, well, why was the tree there? And, you know, why do we have to be born into sin? And why does God allow us to, you know, to sin? Why doesn't he just stop it? Why doesn't he not allow us to make decisions? But the thing is, is that God wants us to decide to follow him. Not for us to be made to love him and made to follow him. But he gives us the same choice he gave Adam and Eve. So even those that are angry with Adam and Eve, well, if they hadn't sinned and they didn't eat from the tree, we wouldn't be in the state. But then what are we doing? We got the same choice. So no need to complain, but to surrender. No need to be angry, but to repent. And then when we are pressing into God, then we have the obligation, the responsibility, and the calling to minister to those that are lost and don't know. And so let's get on assignment. I just wanted to at least cover this chapter, but the next chapters to come have a lot of meat, a lot of milk, a lot of principles.
for us to live by. So stay tuned. Come back for our next session when we start in chapter 6 of Genesis. We're going to close out in prayer. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want notifications when I upload the videos. Don't forget it's Monday through Friday that we get this word. And also Monday through Friday that we are doing prayer online. The information underneath this YouTube video. This is the sit up spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. We need the word. It's our armor. It's our weapons. It is our covering. It's what gives us power and increases our faith and brings us in right relationship with God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just rejoice in you and bless your name and honor you. We thank you, God, you are the great I am. We thank you for your word and for your truth. We thank you for working in us and through us. We thank you for guiding us, Lord God, in the way you would have us to go. We pray that your word takes up residence on the inside of us and dwells in us richly, that we are growing, changing, progressing, that we are growing, Lord God, in your word and truth and in faith and in our relationship with you, that we are being impacted, changed from the inside out, that we are effective, that we are bearing good fruit and that the fruit that we bear that is good will remain. And so, God, we surrender all to you. Have your way and we give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Love you to life. And I will see you on our next session of the sit-ups.